this is Dell Channel 21. A while back on my channel, I featured two GTX 570s in SLI, each with 2.5GB of VRAM. However, since actually having bought one of these cars back new in 2011, eight years ago now, I've always been curious, what would it be like to have three of them in SLI? Well, it's eight years later, now in 2019, and I'm finally going to test it. So here we have three EVGA GTX 570s, and these are all the special variant which have 2.5GB of GDDR5 each, instead of the usual 1280MB. You can find more information about these in my two-way SLI video. Now, in order to get this working, a more special motherboard is required. Here I'm using an ASRock Z77 workstation, actually one of the few Socket 1155 boards to have greater than 2-way SLI support. The rest of the test system includes a 4.6GHz i7-2600K, 16GB of DDR3-1600, and Windows 7 Professional 64-bit. Especially important now is a beefy power supply, in this case a Corsair RM1000X with all the PCIe connectors needed. Let's fire it up and get straight into some gaming performance. Starting with everyone's favorite, GTA 5, running at 1080p with the very high settings. Performance of the three cards was impressive here, showing an average of 77 FPS, beating the Kepler Titan by 4 FPS average, and being only 10% behind the GTX 1060. Three-way improved about 19% over two-way SLI. However, when we look at the 1% low score, things are less flattering at only 40 FPS. Actually, a decrease from 2A SLI, and this could definitely be felt during gameplay, which was noticeably more stuttery compared to 2A SLI. Next up is DICE's Battlefield 1, where I tested the first campaign level at 1080p with the Ultra preset. With 3A SLI, it can now actually surpass the 60 FPS mark at 64 average being 5 FPS behind the Kepler Titan and way behind the 1060. Performance increased 17% over 2-way SLI and now nearly double as fast as a single card. For the 1% load is a different story, increasing only 2 FPS over 2-way SLI and in-game it was far from smooth, as you can see by the frame time graph on the left. Moving on, but to but can it run Crisis, and oh yes it can for sure. Here I tested Crisis 3 at 1080p at the very high settings on the intensive grass level, and would you look at this, 3-way GTX 570 beating the GTX 1060 and Kepler Titan, at an average of 73 FPS. Scaling in this title was nothing short of phenomenal, with all three GPUs being maxed out in almost all cases. Performance improved over 30% over two-way and more than doubled over a single card. Frame times, however, did not see scaling that well, with the 1% low results actually decreasing compared to two-way SLI, and being almost half of that of the 1060 in Titan. Now let's take to some muddy tracks in Dirt Rally, where I tested the built-in benchmark at 1080p Ultra settings. Scaling here was not as good as in Crisis 3, but did still see a great boost of nearly 20% over 2 SLI to an 89 FPS average, around 15 behind the Titan and 1060. More importantly is the impressive 1% low result at 64 FPS. This title ran extremely smooth on two and three way configurations, and overall I'd say this was by far the best gaming experience of all the games I've tested. Next up I have some newer titles for which I don't have other cards to compare to sadly. Firstly is The Division, which I ran the built-in benchmark on the Ultra preset, and it scaled surprisingly well, going from 21 FPS average on a single card, up 62% to a 34 average in 2 way SLI. Adding another card improved the average to 44, over double of that of a single card. Frame times, however, got much worse, as you can see, which resulted in a 1% low of only 19. Things were much better in For Honor, which I tested the built-in benchmark on the Extreme preset, which both scaled well and had better frame times, 
going from 20 on average on one GPU up 69% to 49 FPS in two-way SLI and three-way SLI improved further to an over 60 FPS average. A very good showing for these old cards with consistent frame times. However, there were some artifacts to be seen when going from two to three-way SLI, mostly as you can see when fire is being rendered. And lastly, the popular Ghost Recon Wildlands at 1080p medium settings. Now I'd have to say I was surprised this title ran at all on Fermi. But however, when I got to testing two and three-way SLI, um, it, performance actually decreased with three cards and stutter increased a lot. As you can see by the 33 FPS average, which was the same. However, the 1% low actually decreased. I have tested uh, some other modern titles as well, but as you can see here with Shadow of the Tomb Raider, most of them either flat out refused to run or, like here, ran extremely poorly with three cards enabled. So driver optimization and general SLI um, multi-GPU support in newer titles is really starting to get terrible compared to the older titles. Well, those were quite some numbers, but I've still got a few more for you here. In this chart, I've plotted the performance scaling of two and three way SLI relative to a single card. So in this case of Dirt Rally, going to two way SLI was a performance increase of 1.56 times that of the single card. And going three way was nearly a doubling compared to the single card. It's interesting to see that nearly all titles see an uplift of around 60 to 75 percent when going to two-way SLI. And then going from two to three-way SLI improved another 20 to 30 percent over two-way SLI. Except for of course Crisis 3 which did not care a thing and boosted performance by a whopping 44 percent over two-way SLI. Next up is power consumption, and here I've recorded the total system power during each test, ranging from 585 watt in Dirt Rally to well over 700 watt in Crisis 3. What is cool here is that we can actually see the scaling reflecting into the power consumption figures. If we put them side by side, we can see that the game with the best scaling of course Crisis 3, therefore also drew the most power at over 700 watts. And the games with the worst scaling, Battlefield 1 and Dirt Rally, drew the least power in return. So overall, what has it been like? Well, I think there are a couple key takeaways here. First of all, I was actually quite amazed at the performance uh, we saw in some titles. I mean, Crisis 3, wow! That's some really good scaling right there. And some other games which were, well, terrible, which wouldn't even run or would crash all the time. I have of course shown most of the titles which I have found to work, but there were plenty of others, mostly newer titles which just wouldn't work. And with the general trend with both AMD and Nvidia now moving away from multi-GPU setups, means that support for Crossfire and SLI, or at least good support for Crossfire and SLI in more modern games, will become less and less. And of course, this setup is, on the other hand, very hot, very loud. <laughs> the power figures, I think it was actually quite okay. I was expecting a bit more power to be drawn, but it's really warm and really loud. I've had to put two fans on it just to keep it reasonably cool, and even then it, all cars would hit up to 80 degrees centigrade in Crisis 3. So that was as expected, of course. However, overall, I'm actually quite pleased. I mean, this is an ancient setup, it's 2011, and we've run some intensive titles on high, extreme, medium, um, on extreme detail settings, I should say. And it's been playable. I mean, it's not been great, but it's been playable. So, is it recommendable? No. Was it very cool to do? Yes. So, with that, I will leave you for today. I thank you for watching. If you want to follow me, just uh, please subscribe, or you can follow me on Twitter. If you have anything to comment on, please leave a comment below. And if you want to be kept up to date on future projects, why not consider subscribing? 
Well, this has been Delchon21 as always, and I thank you for watching.